TV shows and movies that feature narcissistic characters. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer toxic relationship rehab. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and let's get going. So today at QueenBeing.com, we're going to talk about TV shows and movies that feature narcissistic characters, starting with narcissists in the movies. Let's begin with The Devil Wears Prada. Miranda Priestly thrives on keeping her employees and everyone else in the fashion industry in fear of her narcissistic rage. Only briefly do you ever see any glimpse of humanity of her in the movie and it's quickly remedied when you realize she's thrown one of her most loyal employees under the bus by giving her would-be replacement the promotion that should have been his in order to protect her own interests and keep her job at the magazine. 2004 movie Mean Girls starring uh, Rachel McAdams and Lindsay Lohan. The Plastics? All of them could be classified as narcissists in one way or another. So Rachel McAdams plays Regina, who happens to be a narcissistic bully. I mean, hey, bullies are narcissistic anyway, most of them, but this particular one, ooh, was really bad. So she happened to love bomb the new girl, Katie, who was Lindsay Lohan. And you know, Katie took, took it on for a bit until she caught on and then did what she could to ruin Regina and... You would see how controlling, manipulative, and horrible Regina was. And the other mean girls did what they could to take her down too. I mean, it was pretty satisfying to watch that the narcissist who was Regina was going down. Though the two followers may be more codependent than anything, but their leader, Regina George, is clearly a raging narcissist who not only makes her followers tell her how skinny and beautiful she is, but she also has no problem using them to get what she wants. There's no doubt that she is certain she's better than everyone else, even her own rather enabling mother. Okay, so as the mother of a child who once did Frozen in the living room, word for word, including all the songs, yeah, I know. Prince Hans definitely fits the bill. First love bombed one sister, all a scam, then goes after the other sister and the money and the power the family had, total narcissist, right? Snow White. The wicked queen literally orders the death of her younger, more attractive stepdaughter for being, well, younger and more attractive. Looks to me like a histrionic narcissist if I've ever seen one. My top two all-time favorite movies about narcissism would have to be Sleeping with the Enemy and Girl Interrupted. What are yours? Mommy Dearest. This true story about actress Joan Crawford offers a classic example of a toxic, abusive, and blatantly narcissistic mother who uses and abuses her two adopted children emotionally, psychologically, mentally, physically, and otherwise. First of all, that is one I did not think of. And the reason I didn't think of it is probably the same reason a lot of other people don't think of it, because in the movie, Julia Roberts is portrayed sympathetically. So you almost feel sorry for her. You almost kind of get where she's coming from, right? Don't even think about the fact that she's kind of toxic because and you see this a lot in hollywood the movies come out and we fall in love with a toxic character we kind of root for them right but they're toxic this is an important thing to mention in this situation most movies have some narcissistic person whether or not they're being portrayed as the protagonist doesn't matter that's interesting i think the bottom line is that hollywood does glorify narcissism and when people say you know our society is rocked with narcissism more than ever it's entirely possible that this is part of the issue, and it's not about the way they look. It's about the way they behave in the movies, in the TV shows. They are often toxic. Dead Poet Society. Puck's father was a bullying, controlling narcissist who ultimately goes too far with his toxic abuse and loses his son to suicide. And if we're being honest, the headmaster of the school could probably also be called narcissistic since he controls the students through threats and intimidation. Favorite movie growing up was Matilda. I watched it like a million times. There are two narcissists in Matilda, but the one that attracted me was Matilda's father, Harry Wormwood, aided by his wife, and their golden child son. The parents of Matilda didn't like acknowledge her being there. She was left home alone when she was only three years old. Like, what parent would do that? My parents did the very best they could with what they had. It wasn't their fault that they didn't have that much. But that doesn't help a child who is beginning to feel like they are being ignored and or uh, compared with uh, younger siblings. And then so she learned all these skills on her own. And that's how she became to have powers. When dressings down happened, they happened in private. So I never knew whether or not my brothers were receiving the same coin as I was receiving. 
so I thought my dad was a little bit too harsh. They didn't keep an eye on her. They didn't pay attention to what she was doing. They just let her do her own thing, and she was a little girl. And that was what drew me to Matilda. Chris Cassie recommends a few good men. Jack Nicholson's character. Colonel Nathan R. Jessup. And now let's talk about narcissists in television. On Mad Men, you had Don Draper, who is the classic, charming, handsome, ladies' man narcissist, and his first wife. Was it Betty? Is that her name? Anyway, yeah, she, she's a good example of a female narcissist. In fact, I think half or more of the characters on that show seem pretty narcissistic to me. Will and Grace. Karen Walker is a rich, beautiful, and blatantly narcissistic character. Rarely shows empathy, but the writers do seem to show enough of her human side that you don't quite hate her. House. Dr. Greg House is an amazing doctor, but he talks down to his patients, to the other doctors, and even his bosses. And except for a few peeks into a slightly human self, House rarely seems to show any empathy at all. Arrested Development. There's one. Yes, it's comedy. And yes, they're meant to act a little crazy and not realistic, but unfortunately, they nailed the narcissism with the mother's character, with the daughter, the sister, rather, uh, of the main character, and pretty much most of the family narcissistic. Breaking Bad. Walter White is clearly a self-focused narcissist who initially seemed to mean well, but ultimately got so wrapped up in the toxic meth business that he apparently ends up dead. More intriguing, though, might be the character Gus Fring, who runs a chain of chicken restaurants, among other businesses, which act as a cover for a multi-million dollar drug ring. Two and a half men, Charlie Harper, Alan Harper, and their mother Evelyn Harper. Each Harper brother is self-focused and entitled in different ways, and it's pretty clear that their narcissistic mother drove their personality development. Gilmore Girls Lorelai Gilmore may be more of a covert narcissist, but she was raised by an obviously toxic mother, and she often appears to show no empathy for anyone outside of herself and her daughter, who, perhaps not surprisingly, she named after herself. The Sopranos Tony Soprano seems to have some serious narcissistic traits, despite apparent empathy that he displays now and then. In fact, his therapist even noted during one episode, I thought we were making progress with your narcissism, Tony. Olivia Soprano also seems to be on the narcissism spectrum. Always sunny in Philadelphia. Okay, you got a good old example of a psychopath on there. So just look at Dennis's character and just look up the Dennis system. All right, now this brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you seen any of these movies? And if so, which ones? And what other movies would you say feature narcissists? Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comment section below and let's talk about it. That's all I've got for you right now. But as always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Now, before I go, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm leaving for you right here and right here. And while you're here, hit that subscribe button right there so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. I'll see you soon.